Hello everyone and welcome to Netmod Masters. In today's tutorial we're integrating Nagios XI with Grafana using InfluxDB. Nagios XI is a comprehensive monitoring tool which lacks advanced visualization. That's where Grafana steps in. A dynamic visualization tool that can display complex data in an easily digestible format. To bridge these two, we use InfluxDB, a database optimized for time series data like that from Nagios. This integration will give you powerful monitoring combined with insightful real-time data visualization. So without further ado, let's dive into the setup process and supercharge your monitoring capabilities. As you can see, in my lab I have Nagios XI already installed. It's the free version, which means there are limitations to the number of hosts and services I can uh, monitor, but the installation is pretty easy, so I'm not going to go over that. I have two virtual machines, um, one for Nagios XI and one for Grafana and InfluxDB. They run uh, Oracle 8 um, and the same commands that I will be using can be used for CentOS, uh, Red Hat and basically all Red Hat uh, based uh, operating systems. All the commands can be found under the video for your ease and I will be copying and explaining what I'm doing each step of the way. So let's start by setting up InfluxDB. Influx will be installed on my Grafana server. And what we need to do is create the repo file and put inside all the information needed for installing InfluxDB. Allows me to yeah, install InfluxDB. Uh, the installation will be pretty fast, so I'm not going to skip it and simply as that we do have influx so i can do looks it's there it's not loaded it's not running we can simply start it and then status will give us the active so Is installed. So the next step um, is to install Nagflux. Nagflux is a type of telegraph used on Nagios server and will be responsible for taking data from Nagios and transferring them into Influx. This is our most crucial configuration to have it right. So um, what do we need to do for Nagflux to work is install uh, Golang uh, in a specific version just because um, the latest versions of Go doesn't have the commands that uh, Nagflux requires. So even the guide provided by Nagios for this integration that we're showing now uh, does not have this updated so uh, that guide does not work. So let's install Nagflux. So Nagflux again will be installed on Nagios XI server, so I'm moving to TMP to download the tar file for Golang because we need to install that first. All right, I'm gonna tar it. I'm gonna create the directories for Golang. I'm gonna put it in the EDC profile, so by anyone. So I'm adding these to the profile. I'm gonna use the profile to the profile. I'm gonna use the profile so I don't have to uh, log out and log in. And now I can do the Go version, which shows me the version we installed for Go. So, with Go installed, we can go ahead and install Nagflux. So we use Go get Nagflux from GitLab, sorry, GitHub. And now we can build it. So build right 
I'm going to create a new directory for Nightflux service, CP. the executable there. I'm going to create the directory where Nightflux will uh, write its data so Nightflux can pick them up. I'm going to give the permissions to Nagios so it can throw the data in there. I'm going to CP the service. So, yeah, oh my copy didn't work. So now we got it right. I'm going to make the service executable. I'm going to do a daemon reload so the service is there. I'm going to enable it. And now we can do system CTO status Nightflux. You see, it's there. It's that's because we need to create the CFG file first. So we create the file and throw the information needed there. File. I can now start Nightflux do a status and you see that it's running with no issues you see that uh, it also found influx but we can test that so back on my grafana server i can run this command which will show the databases inside influx and as you can see uh, there is the internal one which is the default created by influx and there's nagios db nagios db is the one created by Nagflux after it connected to it. Now, before I move on, I will add one more thing here that is also not referenced in the guide provided um, by Nagios, that in Influx, uh, we need uh, some kind of retention uh, to the metrics. And that's because if you don't have any retention or your Influx database or any database for the matter, um, Obviously, at some point, your disk is going to get filled and everything will crash. So, running Influx, I can go into Influx. I can do basic uh, database commands and I'm going to run two commands. The first one is this, which will create a retention policy for two years. So, all data uh, that exceed this retention period two years will be deleted from my um, performance metrics database influx they're not going to be deleted from Nagios, just from influx so having this i can then see whether it worked or not as you can see we now have two retention policies the autogen which is the default by influx and the two-year policy that we just created and it has the duration of two years so now everything after two years, it's going to get deleted. So now that we have that in place, let's move on. And we're going to be installing uh, Grafana. So let's go to TMP so we can download um, the key for the installation. We're going to import it into the OS and we're going to create the repo. So here, I'm adding the lines needed, saving the file, and simply run, run install Grafana. And I'm going to be pressing yes. Okay, this takes more than I thought it would, but I think we're fine. Right. Right. 
so Grafana should be ignored. This is good. Status Grafana server. You see there. So we can now do enable. So it starts whenever the server reboots and then start. And the status you can see now. Now you can even go here and do this, which will bring us to Grafana um, UI. So we clear that. Now we have everything we need. We have Nagflux, we, we have Influx, and Grafana. The last thing we need to configure is Nagios. So basically, we have to tell Nagios not to just store the performance data into RRD files, but also send them to the directory we created so Nagflux can pick them up from there and send them to Influx. So we can then present them to uh, Grafana. So let's do that. So I'm going to stop Nagios from running. Status. I'm going to have to change CFG here. What we need to replace is these lines. Just going to comment them, comment them out. All right. And what we need to add is this. So I will have it ready under the video so you can get it from there and then just save it. So with these new commands in there, we also need to instruct Nagios to use the, pro the appropriate um, commands. So in order to create the commands, you can do it in two ways. One is go through the CLI, right? Uh, and the other one is through the UI. If you do it through the CLI, as with all Nagios XI, CFG files, you need to import them after, so the information can also go to the database. But uh, what I'll do here is I'll do everything over the user interface. So coming here, I will become two commands and I will create two new commands. The first one will be called like that, and it will be responsible for transferring the performance data of um, host six. So here we have this, and save. Now, one more command for the service. We add the name, and we add the command. So save. Now we have our two new commands ready. I'm going to apply it. And now we basically created the commands that Nagios will use in order to send the information to Influx. What this does is that it runs two scripts, this one and this one. Obviously, these scripts don't exist by default, so we're going to have to create them. So. With the commands ready, you can just simply copy paste them. And all I need to explain here is this. The guide provided by Nagios uh, gives you just this move command, which means that um, whatever performance data Nagios is getting will be moved and be captured by Nagflux to be sent to Influx. That means that your graphs in Nagios XI will no longer show anything. So by doing what I'm doing here, you'll be able to have both uh, performance metrics in Nagios XI, but also in Grafana. So you're not losing your performance data from Nagios XI. If you want to only have them in Grafana, you can simply keep the move command and uh, don't use the CP one. So this, I will do the same for the service. Let me grab that. Save it. Now I need to give the. Now I need to make them executable. So do this. 
and then make Nagios the owner of the file so they have the proper permissions to run it. So lastly, I'm going to use my favorite Nagios command. It's this one. It basically checks your whole CFG files, everything you have in Nagios, uh, in Nagios CLI, not the database. And it checks whether there is any errors, maybe commands missing, hosts that exist in host groups, but they have been deleted or whatever issue there might be. This, commands can, this command can find it and it will help you uh, solve things faster. So after running this command, you see that there are zero warnings, zero errors. So I guess we're okay with starting Nagios now. All right. So now we have Nagios. And the last check, the last verification we, we can do is simply go back to Grafana server and throw this command, which will show us the metrics inside the Nagios DB um the, the Nagios DB we created. So for that. So as you can see now, Influx has metrics inside. Check pink, as you can see here. Check pink, check SSH, so it's different um, services, check local mem, and so on. I will show you here that an easy way to know whether uh services can be found in Grafana or if they have performance metrics is basically this icon here. So every service that has this icon means that there are performance data for it. Nagios is also pulling performance data. So if this icon exists here, this service can also be seen in Grafana. So let me log in Grafana. I want to use another password. So here in Grafana, what we need to do is to um, create a new data source that we will use Influx. So we do the add new data source and we have the Influx DB. Um, this, which is, uh, this here is the default and this is what we're gonna use. So, because Influx is installed locally with Grafana server, so it is localhost. And what we need to also do is say which database will be used. So it's the Nagios DB. You see that we got green here. It says that the data source is working. So now we can simply go into dashboards, create dashboard, visualization, user influx, and here you'll see the metrics. And we can now pick what we want to show. So you see host, there's only local hosts. Since in Nagios, I only have one host for now. And I can go to services and here are all the services with performance data as in Nagios. So we can do the current users, which show how many users are currently logged in the server. There is one. And from here on, the sky is the limit. So all the performance data in Nagios, they're still here. They can still be seen here. So I can do this. You see they're here. And they can also be seen and created in uh, panels within Grafana. Uh, I'm not going to go over how to create panels in Grafana in this video, but I can do it later. Uh, let me know if you need um, something from Nagios that you think it's complex or you need help with. Um, there is pretty good knowledge of Nagios and Nagios XI. So if you guys need anything, just uh, go into the comments and let me know. I'll be glad to help. I can also answer any questions you might have on this integration. And uh, that's it for now. Thank you.